Welcome back, everybody, to the conclusion, the back nine coverage of round three of the 2020 Music City Open, presented by Dynamic Discs. I'm Brian Earhart, joined here again, lastly, with uh, Nashville local pro Sarah Sinclair walking us through the course. What's up, Sarah? Not too much. I'm looking forward to see some shredding on the back nine. There's lots of ties at 19 under par at this point, and... I wonder who's going to pull ahead. Yeah, we see on our card, we see Alden Harris is in a solid spot. Chris Clemens is catching some fire as well. And we're seeing solid play and moments of brilliance from everybody on our card. Uh, nobody is over par. No one's really struggling. But the back nine does have a lot of challenging holes that you need to capitalize on. And as you can see here, look how tight the race is. There are so many players right now that are in contention for the even the win. And uh, we have a couple of those in our card and moving into hole number 10. What do you think we're going to be seeing out of these players today on this hole? I would expect the players are going to get as aggressive as possible. Go for the green. I, I mean, I know it's it's far, it's tight. There's a low ceiling, but this is a tough par three and there needs to be some score separation. So I think they'll be at least going for circle two. Yeah, we have some players that are like we said, leaving something to be desired here. So we might see something like Zach going for the big sidearm flex, trying to catch up. And the hat oh. looks a little too flexed. Yeah, a little too high. But being in the middle is totally fine. And Connor throwing a super smooth shot here. Looks like some fairway driver. And he is definitely assuming that most players today are not going to get the two. That's going to be an up and down for a three. Chris has gone for a pretty aggressive lefty flex. And oh, man. That is the lefty flex uh, dream killer <laughs> tree that he hit. He's going to be off to the right side. Alden is good at keeping the, the disc low, but still being able to push forward. So I think he's going to be able to execute this pretty mm -hmm. well, and he does. Yeah, this hole averaged a 3.64 today, so I, I think even getting the three is going to be good for the score. Uh-oh. Oh, boy. Oh, looks like he recovered well. Some weird reaction off that tree, but Zach's just going to have to get up and down for the four. Taking his cart down with him. <laughs> <laughs> From a knee... Instantly oh, says, oh, no. And that's not where you want to be. His second scramble shot is much more successful. Here's Alden. Mm -hmm. A little bit outside circle two, I would say, but a simple up and down to get his par. Uh, still a little work to be done there. Mm-hmm. Kind of an Andrew Presnell-esque uh, putt there from Connor. Yeah. Kind of a shove putt, and he's going to have no problem for the three. Oh. Dang. Zach is feeling it from circle two. And after a really messy uh, second shot <laughs> running into his cart, cashes it for the three. I'm really impressed with his putting today. Yeah. Oh. <gasps> That was, Ooh, that was big close. for Alden right there. That was very big. This is definitely a hole where a bogey is not out of the question. Whew. Couple questionable putts there. <laughs> I don't know what it is about this basket, I guess because it's elevated, but it just seems so kind of vulnerable out in the open here, and it's it always gives me the most stress when I'm putting on it, for sure. <laughs> most definitely. And we go from that to probably the least stressful hole in the course, number 11, 204 foot par three. I think the only way to really screw this hole up is to try to get too aggressive acing it. Um, a lot of players want to throw that little flex sidearm to get up there, and then they can find themselves hitting early. Here's Zach with a pretty solid move on it. Oh, that looked great. Wow. I think that was a gator out of his hand. Maybe the other mistake here is just putting it too far and then having yeah. that, having a comeback putt downhill. 
It's a little bit scary. Connor makes the adjustment, puts the nose up on it. Oh my gosh. And that's another 20 footer for a birdie. Alden's just gonna go a little bit more simple. Straight putter. Yep. No question. And Chris going with a fuse. Kind of a fast disc for this shot, but something he's very comfortable with. He's just going to have to get up and down here. This hole did play about half a stroke under par for, for most of the weekend, I believe. So if you're not taking the birdie, you are losing a stroke to the field. Good recovery there. Connor cashes the birdie from 20 deep. Zach from a pretty similar spot. Two almost identical ace runs from these two. Oh, <sighs> putting that a little too high. After some solid circle two putting, Zach kind of has his first real putting flub of the round. And then Alden just gets another birdie. Hole number 12, 379 foot par three, uphill, low ceiling, forced, pretty much forced distance driver flex shot uh, up the hill if you want any look at the birdie. Um, we might see some conservative play on this hole today, uh, depending on if the players are looking at the scores at this point. Live scoring was there for this tournament. Um, so you never know who, you know, what we're going to be seeing here. Here's Connor. Yeah, if you're feeling the pressure, I would say this hole is pretty anxiety inducing. You've got to keep it in the middle, but also push forward. Yeah, it looks like Connor was yeah. just trying to take a three. That's a smart play. Won't necessarily win the tournament twoing this, but you could lose it by fouring this. Hugging that right side a little bit, but keeps pushing forward. Wow. And he's, what is that? Um, wow. Circle, uh, Almost circle's edge. Circle one, yeah. Mm. Just skies it a little bit, hoping for some good fortune. Oh, similar outcome there, mm -hmm. but gets a kick forward over to the left. Oh, that's a touchy shot up the hill, oh, and he yeah. executes beautifully. Little Annie putter out of the hand from Zach. And Chris really wants to force this sidearm. He just wants something comfortable at this point. Oh, my gosh. That Got was it. such a... From being over there myself, that is a very small window to hit. Gonna be a tap in three for Connor, and here's all the different circles. One's edge. Mm. Oh, just right. Maybe feeling the pressure a little bit. Great par save from Chris. Alden's going to stay at three under par, as will Connor. And let's go back and actually check out our chase card here. Here's Chris Dickerson, who is on a tear. Just pumps a drive oh up the hill. Oh my gosh. That is the best drive I've ever seen on this hole. Super solid. Here's Justin.
Oh, he gets caught up a little bit high, landing left. Hopefully he'll have access to that little window that we saw Chris throw through. And I would say this hole does play over 400 feet. What would you think? Yeah, it, it plays pretty darn close. You're not really seeing too many players get up there with a control driver just because of how low the ceiling is and how uphill it really plays. And you also just need a little bit of, a little bit more movement on the disc getting up the hill to actually push left if you want to put it close to the basket. Mm -hmm. Wow. Using the skippy ground there to get close to the basket. Beautiful shot from Zach. It's really just one of those holes you're happy to take a par on. You know, the moment it comes out of your hand off the tee, you'll know if you have a shot at a two or not. Mm -hmm. I really hope Chris can convert for this This is two. a big two. Oh, my gosh. Left side, actually right side chain out for Dickerson. And as you can see, he's at 20 under par. He's making a move here. And Reed's also in it, too. He's at 19. All making a push for the win here. That is one of the benefits to live scoring that you can kind of keep an eye on what's happening around you. Absolutely. And you can also look at, you know, previous scoring averages and holes to see, you know, what you really think the field will do. So regardless of par, you know, you, you have a better, clear picture of how you want to play the hole. <laughs> and just a re real precious friendship there with uh, yep. Dickerson and Melton. Moving back into number 13. Another one of those holes, just like hole number 11, you got to get yourself inside circle one. Uh, a bogey on this would lose you maybe two strokes on this hole. Uh, 276 foot, pretty straightforward blind hyzer. Um, and really any disc in the bag can get there. It's just all about execution at this point. Big hyzer out of the hand from Connor. That looks good. Wow. 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 He really threw that one up there. Uh, looks like all, um, Alden got caught up a little bit early, but he'll have a pretty, pretty easy putt from circle one. Another big spike hyzer with a firebird from Zach. Dang. And there's the perfect roll to the basket. That is a park job. And Chris going with a verdict flick. Perfect. How have we not seen an ace? <laughs> it's almost drawn up for it at this point. Yeah. Birdie for Alden. That's what we would expect. Star birdie for our card. We're going to move back into number 14. And this is one of, it's actually interesting. We have a hole like 13 where any disc in your bag can really go towards the basket. But 14 is so much more specific of a shape. What do you think about that? Yeah, I have trouble getting to this with just a, I'm not a forehand dominant player. I'm righty. And I've got a lot of trouble just kind of trusting the hyzer flip to get there. So I think if you're a righty forehand player, it, it sets up pretty well for that. It's a very specific kind of flexing out of the hand, but still low sidearm. Takes a lot of trust in your equipment. Connor couldn't quite get the shape. And Alden might be going for that right gap. Hmm. Yeah, he's he going is. inside. Wow, wow, oh wow, wow. Oh my gosh. I have not seen a disc actually get clean through that gap. 
on camera. That was a fantastic shot from Alden. They've done a little bit of cleaning there recently. That gap wasn't Come on, Bert. wasn't very open before, but this shot looks perfect. Oh, a little bit long. Yep, that is the common miss on this hole for the, the righty sidearm. What looks to be a good shot is actually long. Chris just needs to get it around this cedar. Not too and bad. he oh, not too bad. might be inside circle two there. This is a very skippy green as well. Yes. As you can <laughs> oh, see. Oh, man. Yep. Connor puts his to about 15. This is a big putt here for Chris. Hmm. And you don't want it to go too far because you will end up with a very low ceiling under yeah. one of those cedars. Oh, man. Everything I had. <laughs> <laughs> no That's regrets from Zach. Here's Alden. He's got to have this to stay on top. Yep, taking his time. Beautiful. That is a solid, confident birdie from Alden. That is one of the tougher more precise backhand lines that you'll see on this course. It's going to give him some confidence going into 15. Ooh, in the morning, in the morning. Birdie Fuel Coffee. Oh, he took the cup. BirdieFuelCoffee.com. And we're going to move into number 15, 648 foot par four. Extremely placement oriented. You can bite off quite a bit off this tee and try to get down this uh, tighter corridor where the drone is flying now. That's going to be about a 400 foot subtle turnover shot. A lot of players we're seeing, though, are, are taking a bit more of a conservative approach with placement more as a priority. But the, the name of the game is how to attack this green safely. Yeah, I would say starting from the last couple holes, I, I mean, just this entire course, I don't think you can sleep on any one of these holes. This one specifically kind of starts a stretch of anxiety inducing <laughs> holes if you're if you're close to your competitors, which all of these guys are. And Alden has put his in a pretty solid spot on the downslope of that hill. That's got to keep turning. Oh, wow. He bit off a pretty big chunk of distance. He's got down there pretty well. Well, I see driver in Zach's hand. That is an aggressive move if it can keep turning. Nope. <laughs> and he is not as far in there as he, uh, I think might be thinking, but still definitely not optimal spot for a birdie. Yep. Oh. Stands up on it a little bit too much. And that is a fortunate kick out to the wow. middle and he'll have a sidearm from there. Alden throws it wide. He's going to get a skip. Oh, my gosh. And that's going to be about a 25-footer for birdie. This is actually a great spot for Chris to be. He can swing it wide. Ah. He skips a little bit too far forward, gets the unfortunate roll. But not too bad from where he was. Some cheers in the background for our chase card. Oh my gosh. And Connor has tuned them out and has put his <laughs> inside the bullseye. And Zach is going down the road, left side. I didn't realize he was the, that far in. This is a thumber roller, I believe. In all the years I've played this course, I've never seen anyone take this route. I believe he got through just a little bit short. 
That roller caught edge oh my a little bit too quick, but yeah, he's back in play. That was incredible. <laughs> Talk about creativity. Yes. He is tapping par distance. Here's a birdie for Alden. Big putt here. That moves him to six under par, 23 under total for the event. And he's got a few holes left. Zach taps in his par. And Connor kind of moves to a quiet five under for the round. And Chris taps in the four as well. Hole number 16, do you think the players have learned at this point what the, the proper line is? We've been seeing kind of a similar shot all week that really hasn't gotten a lot of pay payoff, I guess you could say. Yeah, I think you said you were surprised by seeing a whole lot of flicks on this, or forehands on this hole, and really it might take more of a hyzer flip, just flip up and let it glide down the, the edge of the hill. I feel like Alden may be taking that approach just from what we've seen from him. And he's going roller. Oh my gosh, okay. And this could work out. Okay. All right. He's in circle two. Circle two. Yeah. Interesting. It's like a flick with maybe a slower disc. Yeah. See, this may just burn out a little bit too early. And that's what I, that's yeah. exactly what I, I keep seeing the yeah. forehands do. Um, and again, I think Zach sees something as well. He might be going roller just to get through all these trees. Whoa. Sky roller. And Zach is inside circle one with a wacky sky roller. It's just so hard to plan where your disc is going to end up once you get down into that tunnel. So exactly. I think it's just kind of like a close your eyes and throw as hard as you can toward the basket exactly. kind of strategy. <laughs> and it's seeming to work for a few of these players. And Chris throws a bit more of a subtle hyzer wow. flip, and that's going to be a solid uh, about 30-footer at the basket. This is more downhill than it looks on camera. This is kind of a death putt, in my opinion. Man, and he cans it. Oh, man, that, that is three in a row from Alden. I think maybe four in a row. Yeah, I believe that's Alden's fourth wow. birdie in a row, and that is a beautiful downhill putt. He is feeling it right now. Connor's just going to lay up. He'll have a nice, easy tap in three. And here's Zach for a bird. Ah, just oh, off the tray. Can't capitalize on that great drive. Solid putt from Chris. Par for Connor. Hole number 17, par three, 415 feet. We've seen Logan Bowers go giant spike flick over the left side trees. We've seen drivers come into the green straight. We've seen putters. Um, I think this lets the individuality of the player kind of shine through here. This is definitely a hole where you need the birdie though. Yeah, looking for some padding going into 18. Alden's thrown, this looks like a putter and puts it to about 40 short of the basket. That's going to be another death putt. Power forehand from Chris. As long as that sits down. Oh, yeah. Wow. Such a solid shot. That's flipping up and coming down nicely. Wow, that's a really flippy disc that Connor threw. Oh man, it looks like he got caught up on the mm. right side just a little bit there. Oh. 
Zach going slower disc, but still enough checkup to push him wide of the basket. I think he's about circle two. Oh, Ooh. man. Just off the top. Fortunately, hitting the top of the basket there. Yeah, that's a scary run. Yeah. Mm. Same result. So here's Zach from about 35. Yes. Very nice. Solid putt from Zach. I actually would like to know the stats on percentage of players who bogeyed 18 after bogeying 17. You'd, you'd really want to get the birdie on 17 as cushion for what could happen on 18. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I can just imagine how demoralizing it can feel to, to you know accidentally bogey this hole and then have to face 18 after that. That's a look into the mental game for sure. And we're going to go back in and check to see uh, some more shots from the third day on hole number 17. And after that montage on 17, the real adventure begins. Final hole of the tournament, number 18, 742 foot behemoth hole. Um, you heard the players talk about it all week, trying to strategize what the best way to play this new hole was. And where the drone is flying, I believe, is about 50 feet too far to the right from where the players actually want to land. This middle section is extremely hard to have a clean look at. A lot of players are trying to push a little longer and through the gap off the tee to just give themselves some look up this crazy fairway to the basket. Just not an easy hole whatsoever. Anything can happen out here. And we are going to go in to see how our chase card is doing. We have Chris Dickerson, who's still playing pretty solid at this point, laying down a roller. Wow, that came out of his hand so fast. Yeah, I believe that that was a 12 or 13 speed driver that he was throwing a roller with. I believe it was a D6. Oh my gosh. But yeah, this, this tee shot is just so challenging. You could tell he wanted that really bad. And Justin's just going to go with high flipping turnover, and he's going to be out of the mouth, so really no look for the birdie there. This hole benefits the lefty so much. Zach's going to get to go wide, flat, and didn't quite get it on the angle he wanted. That's two inside, and that's automatic bogey territory, unless you throw something miraculous. How do you feel about this hole being a finishing hole? You know, I... When I first saw it in practice, it was a brand new hole. I got the explanation from the uh, some of the people running this event that uh, there are definitely trees they want to take down, but they're having a tough time justifying currently 
Oh, that was tricky. <laughs> Having a tough time currently justifying cutting down these beautiful old mature trees that, you know, uh, theoretically need to go to make the hole a little bit cleaner. But they're kind of wanting at this point to let that happen naturally. And we see with, you know, a lot of wooded courses over time with storms and wind, a lot of these smaller trees fall down and shape the fairways in a different way than they'd originally planned. So um, my opinion is that it's too new to have too much of an opinion. As of right now, it's just a really, really daunting finishing hole. And there is theoretically a, a, a solid way to play the hole. This is the route that you don't want to have to take. You want to be a bit more left, but unless you're Chris Dickerson. Wow. And that was insane. He totally that. was that. such a good shot. <laughs> but I think if the right side opens up a bit more and the left side just opens up a tiny bit more, it'll give a few more options for the player to fight for birdie. And then it'll be a really well-balanced par four. But um, like the you know lo locals were saying, I think naturally that will happen over time. And hopefully without having to manually cut down trees. Yeah. Man, Justin just squeaked by. Yeah, you see a lot of forehand rollers in this hole, a lot of tomahawks, a lot of trick shots being pulled out here. Reed puts it close. And I believe, is this for birdie from Chris? I believe so. Oh, and Ooh. Chris hits it. Snags the yep. birdie to finish the tournament. And that puts Dickerson at, I believe, 23 or 24 under par. 23, I believe. Zach, solid putt there to finish. Justin finishes with a solid six down, 18 under par overall. Actually tying with Reed at 18 under par. And here we go. Here's our lead card finishing up. Chris Clemens is going with a defender, I believe. And that looks pretty solid. Wow. So he'll be down there. That right side, again, is still challenging. But with his sidearm, he might be able to snake something through there. I'm sure Chris Dickerson is eagerly looking at the score as he knows he's done all that he can do, especially on this hole, to finish with the best score possible. Watch your booty. Uh-oh. And that... Don't hit my friend Tara. <laughs> And this is a big hole for Alden. He, I believe, is 24 under par. And he still goes with the aggressive roller. And this... Yes. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. Still in a decent spot. Connor was going with a bit of a flat roller with something super understable. That tree just seems to get in the way for most people's mm -hmm. rollers there. Oh, and he actually Yikes. quite a bit backward. Oh, that is terrible position from there. And he tried doing another flat oh to gosh. flip roller. Actually puts himself to a decent spot. Should be 150 to 200 feet up to the basket. And this is, again, really important for Alden. He goes roller again. And does not get very far. This is getting interesting. Zach going with a big forehand roller out to a decent spot. Alden just needs to get up and down from where he's at to secure his lead over Chris Dickerson. There's a fuse from wow. Clemens. That's why he throws the disc. 
And that's the kind of putt you want to end with. Oh, yeah. And here it is, folks. Sort of some odd footing. I believe his disc landed under that log. And you wow. can't quite see where the disc <laughs> is, but it looks like he hit that tree and stayed, and he, I believe he is parked for his par. Ooh. Connor with a little bit at the basket. He's going to be about 25 long. You playing the ground there? Well, it worked oh, yeah. out perfectly. Connor finishes with a five down, solid tournament for Connor. He did receive one of the elusive USDGC spots from his finish this weekend. So congratulations to Connor getting your ticket to the big show. Clemens finishes with seven down after a beautiful birdie to finish. And there it is. Wow. Some solid play. I believe there were four birdies in a row on that back stretch for Alden that really brought him back after a tough first nine. That was a nail biter. And out of, I believe, 147 players in this field, some of the best players in the world, Alden Harris gets his time in the spotlight. Well earned. I'm sure we'll be seeing a lot more from him in the future. Absolutely. Big sigh of relief from Alden. <laughs> Brittany Dickerson comes in for the hug. You know, it's just the, these players travel all year. Alden lives in his van and, and plays for the love of the game. And for him to come out on top this weekend is uh, fantastic to see. And again, like you said, we'll be seeing a lot more of him in the future. There you have it, folks. All done here. Make sure to subscribe to Gatekeeper Media on YouTube. We will continue to keep bringing you great disc golf content. I'm Brian Earhart, joined here again. Sarah Sinclair, we will see you next time. Thanks for having me.